Welcome to PC Gaming Tech Summary. I'm your host, Gamer. And today we go over a few of these choices between AMD and Intel. Yes, we're heading into the latter half of 2022, and we've got the new AM5 socket by AMD. And we've got 13th Gen coming out from Intel. And the new Z790 motherboards. Yes, so there is a micro stuttering issue with the new AMD platform. In Windows Update, in for Windows 11, there is an update, KB5017383, that's 7383. And it is causing some issues with the new AM5 platform. So, um, just thought I'd pass that on. If you're having um, a few strange results on your uh, FPS in 1% lows, 0.1% lows, well, may help to not have that installed. Okay. With the AMD Ryzen 7950X, that is today on the 28th of September, 731 US dollars, okay? And the Intel 12900K is 585, 13900K is not out yet, but one of the main things with the Z790 motherboards it is possible to have Generation 5 M.2s. Yes. So you will not be able to get it on the very cheapest boards from what I can tell. Um, you're looking maybe between four or $500 um, before it will have Generation 5 M.2s, but more to follow as this is released. Okay, the AMD Ryzen 7950X, it's got 16 fast cores and 32 threads. Now, if you were to compare this to the 12900K, it actually has half as many fast cores. It only has eight fast cores and it has eight slower one threaded cores. Okay, and so the AMD Ryzen 7950X has 32 threads, 12900K has 24 threads, and the new 13900K has got eight fast cores only and 32 threads. So they're just adding on some more efficient cores, slower efficient cores um, to that package and they're boosting frequencies. Okay, so this is just an example of um, the amount of power the CPUs are using. Um, and this is um, from a, a rendering test. Um, the AMD Ryzen 7950X, um, it actually runs at 95 degrees C, okay? So um, if you're planning on like overclocking like crazy, well, you, you might wanna keep that in mind. Okay, with the AMD Ryzen 7950X, this rendering test um, at 95C, I believe, <laughs> it used 250 watts, okay? The 12900K used 245 watts, and in comparison, the 12700K used 160 watts. Okay, so, um, yeah. So power efficiency is uh, not that fantastic with any of these. Um, and um, basically you can underclock, undervolt the 7950X and get phenomenal gaming re results, phenomenal rendering results, and cut your temps down drastically. Okay, so what if you want to put that thing in a small form factor case? Well, 
<laughs> you just undervolt and underclock it and you'll be set. To keep in mind the total number of cores for each of these CPUs, uh, the 7950X has 16 total cores, 12900K 16 total cores, and the 13900K will have 24 total cores. What we have here is a column of CPUs. Um, the price as of September 28th, cores and threads, how many fast cores? So uh, the, AM, uh, the AMD have all fast cores while the Intel have slower efficient cores as well as fast performance cores. The cost of a motherboard, cost of RAM, cost of CPU plus motherboard plus RAM, M.2 technology, and whether or not it has Wi-Fi. So this is a yes over there. Okay, and this is PCIe Express 5 here. If we start off with the 7900X that has DDR5, it is $590. It's got 12 fast cores, 24 threads. The cost of an entry-level motherboard is going to be around $330. For instance, the ASUS Tough Gaming X670E Plus Wi-Fi 6E. All right, so that is going to have four M.2 slots, and that is going to have one Gen 5, two Gen 4s, one Gen 3. The price for DDR5 RAM that has 5,600 mega transfers will be $210 as of the 28th of September. So if you add those three figures together, CPU, motherboard, and RAM, you get $1,130 US dollars, okay? Now, if we go up here and we have a look at the 13700, we're just estimating the price. So today's price for 12700, and this is the non-K version, is 343. Okay, so I'm just assuming it's going to be around that perhaps for the 13700. Um, and if we get an entry-level motherboard, a for instance, like an ASUS Prime B660 Plus DDR4, 140 US dollars. Um, we're going to have DDR4 RAM, 3200, 32 uh, gigabytes. So all of this is for 32 gigabytes. That will be $90. So if you add those three up, it, you get 573 bucks. You'll have three Gen 4 M.2s. PCIe Express 4 on the graphics card slot, no Wi-Fi, so just add 30 bucks if you want Wi-Fi to that. With the appropriate motherboard so that you can have a fast a Gen 5 M.2 slot, you're going to need a mid-range motherboard. You won't be able to get it on the budget as far as I can see. So you could get it with the ITX board. The, ROG Republic of Gamers Strix Z790i gaming Wi-Fi or the Z790-E gaming Wi-Fi um, is another example. Um, so you're looking at $400 to $450, somewhere around there. And uh, that's what that's going to cost you. And then the DDR5 RAM, $210 for the 5600 okay add those three figures together and you get a thousand and three bucks okay so do you need gen 5 m.2 are you going to use it are you going to be able to afford it how long is it going to be before you do how many years well is this an option to going 140 instead of 4050 if you want to go Intel? DDR4 RAM, do you have old DDR4 RAM that you can plop in there, save money there? So obviously you can get a fast system 
um, at a lower price or, you know, if you go that route. A few things to keep in mind is that NVIDIA is releasing the 4000 series of graphics cards very shortly here and it is going to be a PCIe Express 4. Okay, so you're looking at the next round of NVIDIA graphics cards after that to be another two years and then I would assume they're going to have PCIe Express 5 on their GPUs. What about AMD? I don't know about AMD. Even if it has PCIe Express 5, what's the speed difference? What's the FPS difference between 4 and 5? I don't think you're going to see much difference. All right. So please keep this in mind. Well, if you'd like to see more videos on these new motherboards coming out and a wide variety of technology subjects, all you have to do is subscribe and you'll get notified when those videos are ready. And thanks for joining us here on PC Gaming Tech Summary. And don't forget, you'll be seeing me in the next video.